Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Hello. I'm here in the Ross Room in Canoga Park, where we monitor shuttle launches. It seems like a good place from which to launch our first focus on Rocketdyne for 1992. With a difficult year behind us and the new year offering similar challenges, I'd like to talk about where we are as a company and what our prospects are for 1992. If I were to sum up 1991 in a word, that word would be challenge. We were challenged as a country, we were challenged as an industry, we were challenged as a company, and we were challenged as individuals. Our success in meeting these challenges is evident in the numbers. During 1991, Rocketdyne engines operated satisfactorily on 17 launches. We delivered 26 Atlas, Delta, and SSME engines and 17 Peacekeeper four stages. We responded to the restructuring needs of the space station program in a timely and professional manner. Beyond these broad accomplishments were the spirit and dedication of individual employees. You helped us introduce organization excellence into the SSME program and began planning for its use on space station. During the year, over 70 CPI teams studied ways to improve our processes. Through your OE and TQM efforts, we achieved amazing and needed cost reductions and quality improvements on the SSME and ELV programs. Yes, we began the year having met 1991's challenges, but at a cost. For instance, our population is down about 800 people through a combination of attrition and layoffs from this time a year ago. Many of the conditions that created the challenges of 1991 will be with us in the new year. A quick look at a few programs that hold the key to our future will show you what I mean. We'll start with Space Station Freedom. Station has been fully funded for 1992, but we expect the debate over freedom to heat up again this summer when Congress considers fiscal 1993 appropriations. Our task is not only to perform on this program, but also to make sure that station's many benefits are fully considered during that debate. Funding for the shuttle program peaked in 1990. With completion of the engines for Endeavour last year, activity will be at a reduced level this year. With the success of our 10,000 second fuel pump, NASA has just put on hold the Pratt & Whitney fuel pump program, but will continue their oxidizer pump activity. Also, formation of organization excellence teams continues as OE and TQM becomes the standard within SSME. The STME program faces trials of its own. We forged a successful teaming agreement with Aerojet and Pratt & Whitney on this program last year, but funding remains problematic. Still, we are optimistic about the future of the STME, which will be the cornerstone for this country's national launch system program. The Atlas and Delta programs continue on course. Our customers on these programs have gone through difficult times themselves. They need our best effort in order to compete against increasing global competition for commercial launch services. Our performance on Peacekeeper continued to be outstanding, but the 1991 buy was the last Peacekeeper buy. Work will continue through 1993 when we'll produce our last Peacekeeper four stages. The teaming agreement on NASP has proven to be a success, but like Station and STME, funding remains a concern. Funding for NASP has been reduced by 20% from fiscal 1991 levels. This suggests that we'll face some staff reductions on this program during 1992. The funding situation must stabilize if the U.S. is to fly the X-30 by the end of the decade as planned. Strategic Defense Initiative programs receive exceptionally strong support this year driven to a large extent by interest in tactical missile defense systems. Our LEAP and ground-based interceptor programs will benefit from this strong funding support. This has emerged as an area of major potential for us, and we could add 100 to 200 new jobs this year. In another area, the Department of Energy's decision to stretch the new production reactor program by two years will slow our projected growth in this important business segment. Taking these challenges as a whole, we expect further reductions in our workforce this year. Attrition, including retirements, could probably take care of about half of the 500 positions that we expect to lose during 1992.
Believe me, it's not easy for me to come to you with such mixed news so early in the new year. But I would not be living up to the Rockwell credo, my own personal standards, or the responsibilities of my job if I weren't honest with you. And part of that honesty is to assure you that the overall picture remains bright. 36 launches across several programs are planned this year using Rocketdyne systems. We will again be a billion dollar division in 1992 and will continue to provide jobs for more than 7,200 employees from Hawaii to Florida. Our business base is solid and more diverse than it has ever been. More importantly, we are starting the new year together as a team, knowing what the challenges are. We can prepare ourselves for those challenges and work together with our customers, for Rockwell shareholders, and for ourselves to make 1992 a good year. We are continuing to identify and pursue business opportunities that match our, your, considerable abilities. And I promise that I will keep you informed about the issues that affect our business and our jobs. Our vision remains clear and our goal unchanged, to be number one in our field. With the talent and teamwork we have here, there's no challenge that can deter us from pursuit of that goal. Thank you for your time. Up next is the winter edition of Focus on Rocketdyne, followed by a special feature of the Man Flight Awareness Program. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy them both. Thank you. CBS-TV's environmental awareness campaign called To Protect Our Planet. The campaign is sponsored in... The band, the band. Next. We are never going to find a safety belt spokesperson. <gasps> Let's get buckled! <laughs> Yeah, we've helped save thousands of lives. But some people still don't buckle up. So let's hit it! You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. We better just recycle more. to bring you an exclusive report. According to company officials, John Nagamatsu has been selected Vice President of Environment, Health, Safety and Facilities. Now Trish, a reliable source just told me that John Nagamatsu is uniquely qualified for this new job. He has been the Vice President of Production Operations at Rocketdyne since 1984. Now this marks the first time in Rocketdyne's history that an executive level position has been created to address the concerns of the environment, health, safety and facilities. We'll have more details about this important development on News at 11. I'm... Ramco presents Vince and Larry Smash Hits with timeless classics like... Hey, everybody grill like you. And everyone who doesn't buckle up will remember the hard and bone-breaking sounds of... You've got me wrapped around your fender. Your concerns, an enormous increase in traffic and resulting air pollution. I'm Chuck Loshan with the Green Report on 95.5 KLOS. I'm here to tell yo, I'm here to say You shouldn't drive to work alone each and every day If you ride with two, maybe three or four We'll clean the air and this pollution thing is out the door Health and sick, health and sick, health and health and sick health You know, sick. one of the things that I hate to see Is someone living life so carelessly So buckle your belt, snap it in place It's better to be safe just in case. Commitment to the environment. I know you heard, but I'm saying again. Don't ever throw your oil down the drain. Just plan ahead. It's not real tough. There are many better ways to dispose of this stuff. The laser printer is a cool machine. Makes briefings look better, really nice and clean. The toner is stored in this device. But when it's all gone, take this advice. Don't throw it away. It can be refilled. Then you can use it once again. Aren't you just thrilled? Safety. 
shades, crazy cool. Why do I wear them? Well, I ain't no fool. They protect my eyes in emergencies. So tell your friends to wear them. Won't you do that, please? Commitment to the environment. Chemicals. This is potent stuff. And that's the very reason I can't stress enough. Keep them labeled and properly stored. Just use your common sense. It should not be ignored. These are the things that must be learned. It's the right thing to do so you don't get burned. Knowledge. My closet is full of the clothes I like. I have dresses and gowns. They're fun to wear at night. When at work, I must confess. I wear gloves, I wear a shield, and an apron, no less. I know these clothes aren't the latest trend, but when I'm working here, they protect my skin. And that ain't no joke. Now, we've got to get it across to them to get into carpooling. Correct. Uh, what? Uh, trains? Um, Bicycles? Yeah. Clean mm -hmm. air. Bottles, cans, and plastic containers aren't garbage anymore. So don't treat them that way. Start recycling. Airbags are great when you're hit from the front. But if somebody says you don't have to buckle up... Crocodine's involvement in the production of our last two Dance for Life shows has really been tremendous. They provided the video equipment and crews required to shoot our show Dance for Life. This annual fundraiser supports Vital Options, a support group for young adults with cancer and other life-threatening disease. Vital Options is the nation's only organization dedicated to the emotional needs, the educational resource needs of young adults predominantly between the ages of 17 through the early 40s that are facing a diagnosis of cancer or other life-threatening disease. Uh, cancer does not have to be a death sentence. Cancer does not have to be a down thing. It can be a phase in your life that you work through and conquer. So Dance for Life is a wonderful up feeling. It's and a good I, I think metaphor. That's why, you know, yeah. It's a good metaphor for what Vital Options is, is trying to do. Uh, when you're working with a charity, there's virtually no money to work with. You're always trying to beg, borrow, and steal in order to make the event happen. To do Dance for Life, it takes a lot of sensitivity and giving from the professionals that are there um, to commit to something that is voluntary. There's people that are committed already to other jobs and giving their time and getting together to do the show and fixing their schedules so that they can be there to put the show together. The most difficult part and most nerve-wracking part about doing the show is that, that uh, we don't see the show in the same sequence as it's being done when we rehearse. And as we look at our watches and it's getting closer to curtain time, it gets extremely nerve-wracking. However, when the lights go down and the curtain goes up, all those butterflies go away and the show starts and every show has been better and better and better and it's exciting. Sometimes a friend starts treating you bad for the world. Liza Minnelli performed for us last year, and she's one of the many exciting performers that help us out with Dance for Life. in Chicago a couple weeks ago, 88-year-old woman, she won $17 million. I'm reading the story. They don't give her all the money at once. They give her 600 grand a year over 20 years. What a cruel joke the state is playing on this woman. So walk on by. Don't stop. Oh, walk on by. Don't stop. I just can't get over losing you So if I seem broken and blue 
But maybe one of the most moving performances was a group called Louis Louis. Their performance was stellar. They had the audience in the palm of their hand. Personally, um, it's a lot of fun to do the show. And so for that reason, um, I enjoy it and will continue to do it as long as they want me to do it. The Space Shuttle Discovery has flown twice during our report period. One of its missions on September the 12th, 1991, was to deploy NASA's Upper Atmospheric Research Satellite. This flight spearheaded NASA's mission to planet Earth, a long-term international space research program focusing on the study of ozone depletion. On November the 24th, Atlantis STS-44 was launched from Kennedy Space Center on the eighth dedicated DOD shuttle mission. The primary mission objective was to deploy the Defense Support Program satellite. This system was designed to detect and report real-time missile launches and nuclear detonations using infrared detectors. The first space shuttle launch of 1992 was Discovery STS-42. This eight-day space lab mission was dedicated to experiments that investigated the effects of microgravity on living organisms and material processes using the International Microgravity Laboratory. The Atlas program has celebrated two milestones within the report period. On November the 28th, 1991, this Atlas E rocket was successfully launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base, marking the 500th launch in the program's history. On December the 7th, Rocketdyne's MA-5A engine system completed its first flight, powering the Atlas rocket on another successful mission. Our Rocketdyne Atlas team deserves hearty congratulations for their efforts in reaching these major program highlights. Focus on medical, take one. And action! department it's there for you they have doctors and nurses and yes. aspirin too cut cut no no that's not what i want this is a medical video i want to concentrate on medical issues oh well you didn't tell me that i can't possibly get a new script and new actors and recast it all look i don't care what you think i told you or what you think you have to do just do it like I say. Now. Oh, Gee, man. Focus on medical. Take two. And action. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of Rocketdyne. Cut! Cut! No! What is it this time? You didn't even give it a chance. I gave you a medical issue. What more do you want? What I want is something sensible and informative, not some frivolous soap opera theme. Oh, well, I guess I'll just have to show you what I want myself. We'll start with Peggy, the dispensary nurse. She is here for those who have minor ailments, such as cuts, bruises, burns, and aches. She administers any type of treatment that is needed, and she has a full array of over-the-counter medications to get you through the day. Maureen is a certified x-ray technician. Her main job is to attend to people needing x-ray for injury or routine procedure. She also schedules all of the physicals for people working with radiation, respirator users, toxic chemical handlers, and critical hardware handlers. Man, I wish I wouldn't have to do this. That comment doesn't understand the dying thing. Now, Jeff is our physician's right, assistant. Honey, he takes care of the employee injuries, oh, suturing, and administering medications. He sees employees on the annual physical program to do health assessments for those at high risk. We have four registered nurses, Marion and Lois, and Casey and Liz. They do exams needed for placement, hearing conservation, and vision certification. 
Pulmonary function testing is done for respirator users to check lung capacity and compare with previous results. These surveillance exams are done by Marion and Lois, mostly in two areas. Dr. Norton Stein heads up our medical department with Thank the help you, of his secretary, Barbara. He keeps busy with exams as well as his other duties and volunteer work. Now this area is used for blood sampling and EKGs. When the testing is finished, samples are sent out for laboratory results. It's kind of busy in here today. Larry, our physical therapist, comes in three times a week to work with people who have work-related injuries to get them back on their feet again. Medical leaves are coordinated through Laura. She takes care of all paperwork needed for a leave and makes sure people receive their paychecks in a timely fashion. Our last area supports the Health Enhancement Program, which is coordinated through the Rec Center. This program works with the medical to encourage wellness in the workplace. Now, that wasn't so bad, was it? Now, that's what I want my focus on medical to say. Do you think you can put something together along those lines? Oh, I think I might be able to manage that somehow. Recently, students from 17 nations were tested in science studies. American students ranked near the bottom, ahead only of Hong Kong and the Philippines. In physics, American kids ranked last. And our math students were well below most other nations in a variety of tests. Since 1983, freshman enrollment in engineering has steadily declined. That's why people like Rocketdyne's Mac Fry are doing something about these statistics. Mac is one of 20,000 engineers participating in the National Discover E program. The E stands for engineering. This year, the E also stands for exploration. You, too, can inform, teach, and inspire these young people through Discover E. You can help them explore the world around them. It has been proven that getting kids involved early in science and math helps maintain their interest in the subject later on. The Discover E program may be the single largest student outreach effort the engineering profession has ever sponsored. During 1992, we expect to reach nearly 2 million students and teachers with our program. We have the full support of the National Education Association and the local school districts in this effort. I would like to invite each of you to do what you can to participate wherever you can. This year, over 250 engineers are participating from Rocketdyne alone. Each of us needs to do our part toward educating and inspiring the kids of America to become the engineers and scientists of tomorrow. Remember what we've learned. Getting them involved early in math and science maintains interest in these subjects later as they contemplate their careers. Join us during 1992 in the Discover E program.